This podcast is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world, and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage and microgrid solutions. And KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. This episode is also made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I have some pretty exciting news, especially if you're in the UK, perhaps near the Birmingham area, uh, but also for everyone who's interested in the growth of the EV charging infrastructure all over the world. We have seen great examples of what it is to have a great charging experience, and a lot of that has been set by just simple ease of use, chargers that are always maintained, and you pull up and you plug in and you're ready to go. You get the charge you're promised and you carry on your way. So today, big announcement, the group the EG Group specifically has their first EV point chargers operational at Asda Express in Udo Exeter. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but these are the first Tesla V4 superchargers that are white labeled. Of course, they have this EV point branding on them that are going live for the public to charge. So this is really, really exciting for a couple reasons, and I'm going to dive into exactly why that is. The way that Tesla is selling these chargers is that they're only, as far as we know, selling the V4 dispensers. A reminder is that we haven't really seen the V4 cabinets. That is the power that is supplied to the dispensers, the chargers that then, you know, put the, the charge into your EV. Back in November of last year, EG Group was one of the companies to announce that they were going to come to a deal. They had come to a deal with Tesla to acquire their ultra fast charging units for their EV point business growing across the UK and Europe. And as the announcement stated, their chargers would be branded EV point and leverage Tesla's technology. The hardware will operate on an open network basis, meaning that all drivers would be able to access the EV point chargers, regardless of the brand of electric vehicle that they drive. And it's important to note that the charging standards are different in the U.S. than they are in Europe and in the U.K. Uh, the Type 2 CCS charging plug standard was decided upon and upon the Euro decided upon by the European Union, and that's what they is what they use over there, large scale. So the chargers, as the EG Group announced, would also support plug and charge protocol, which just totally simplifies the charging experience and automates payment, which is really nice. And they had expected these chargers to roll out by the end of the year, last year, 2023. But of course, this announcement is coming in March of 2024. But if you ask me, that's not too shabby. We are not sure of the size of the deal, including how many chargers they acquired and how much they're going to pay. Perhaps it is dynamic. I'm not exactly sure. So who is EG Group? EG Group is one of the world's leading independent convenience retailers, and they have a pretty extensive network of sites across international markets in the UK, in Ireland, continental Europe, Australia, and the United States of America. And I'm going to share a little bit of their footprint because as a giant group, it's good to know really exactly how they expand out. So as you can see, they have some pretty significant stats here. Of course, 180 million coffee cups sold, but also 17.6 billion liters of fuel sold each year. They have 3.5 million daily customers, over 1,000 food service outlets, 500 EV charging points, and tons and tons of products. If we look over to their footprint and their number of sites, we've got over 600 in the UK and Ireland going up to 700, over 3,000 in Europe, over... 1,500 in the U.S. and over 500 in Australia. So a pretty good footprint, and they are aiming to continue to grow their presence of EV chargers. They're looking to have more than 20,000 chargers in the future. Okay, so what about this site? Back to this announcement, which is pretty exciting because we're finally seeing these white-labeled Tesla superchargers out there, ready for public use. So as far as I can tell from these images, there's at least eight chargers, but 
I couldn't really deduce from these photos exactly how many there are. And the details are not on PlugShare yet. So I'm not exactly sure. Maybe I should be using another site. But this was a little bit curious. And I was talking to Kyle about this because typically in the US, we see that there are four chargers. Chargers are installed or dispensers are installed in sets of four because a cabinet can support four. So if they did have 10, which I have seen written, although I only see eight for confident, that would mean that they need at least three cabinets if there were 10 stalls. And technically the cabinets can support four each, which means that maybe there is some extra energy here. Europe, I have heard also maybe often uses sets of three. It might be a little bit different than the US in terms of their site setup with Tesla supercharging stations, but the Tesla cabinets are a lower output in Europe. I'm going to get a little nerdy here for a second. 400 volts versus input versus in North America, we have the 480 volt input from our grid. This runs out to four cabinets. So either way, it would be a little bit unusual to find a 10 dispenser site because typically you want to maximize the value of the cabinets that you put in by maximizing the number of dispensers that you power on the site with those cabinets. The reason that there might be extra power maybe is that there it can be definitely use in reducing the risk of site level power limiting when too many EVs need power all at the same time. Perhaps there's an extra cabinet to fill in the blanks there to make sure everyone's getting as much value from the charging session as they can. But like I said, I haven't seen details on either the EG Group site, EV Point doesn't really have its own site, so I'm not sure exactly how many stalls are here. But if you happen to be listening and are over in the UK, let me know how the site is. Let me know how big it is. I'm sure we'll get more details soon. I'll remind you that this is not the only company that has purchased EVs from, I mean, EV chargers from Tesla. In fact, there are many other cases of this. I'll remind you of last year, BP bought $100 million worth of Tesla chargers to brand under their brand name, BP Pulse. This was to go along with their strategy to compare, con to expand its convenience store business and build an EV charging network. Obviously, they don't want to fall behind just going with oil, but I have to think that the oil companies aren't that worried about it yet because this is just the first wave of gas stations sharing with electric stations, EV charging stations at these very convenient spaces that we know gas stations are. BP Pulse has this Giga Hub, an EV charging station that will be open to the general public on April 2nd. That is not very far from now today, March 21st. The site will feature 24 EV DC fast charging points, and we will be excited to check that out. It's also interesting to see what other kind of convenience store gas stations are taking advantage of Tesla's pretty industry disrupting move of selling their hardware. And now we'll get to see how it all unfolds, which is, it's really intriguing. Reliable infrastructure at your site will undoubtedly bring more customers and most importantly, more happy customers driving their EVs to your establishment and getting the service that they want from the chargers. Some other companies aren't buying directly from Tesla, but are still expanding their own networks, including EVgo and Pilot Flying J in conjunction with GM Energy, offering public DC fast charging at 500 locations aiming for 50 miles apart on the U.S. corridors, really handy. Usually those are just four stalls, though. Some people have opinions about that. Of course, Shell Recharge has their own EV charging network and apparently big plans for their growth by 2030. And Chevron also has a partnership announced with FreeWire Technologies, which is the battery energy storage solution for EV charging. We've covered this a good bit on the channel and look forward to covering that more. Uh, a deep dive soon. They actually had some recent interesting news. So they're putting in those charging stations at their gas stations. And, you know, this is going to keep happening. Uh, EV companies involved with EVs at all or the vehicle industry are going to be investing in electric some way or another. Kyle even saw that Hertz had some behind the fence version three Tesla superchargers at one of their sites that he was driving by and also that there was a free wire there as well. All behind the fence, of course, so that means private charging for their fleet. Very interesting. So it'll be great to track what the most profitable models are as well when incorporating EV charging into your site, into your business model. And it's not an inexpensive undertaking and that is really, you know, saying, taking that lightly. We've seen some permits for Tesla supercharging stations on site host land that show a relatively less expensive site installation from Tesla supercharger stations compared to other 
permits, other offerings, other hardware selling companies. And it's a little bit curious. We do assume that if the cost is so much lower from what we've seen that they're not, Tesla's likely not factoring in the cost of their own equipment into those permits. We're not sure, but that seems to make the most sense when you consider how they're able to really have less expensive site installation costs that we've seen in permitting. So Tesla interacting with all EVs on the road, this will likely push, you know, of course they're opening up the supercharger network in the US to other brands, Ford and Rivian so far. I'm hearing rumblings of GM soon, pretty cool, but also in the, in the US and the UK as well. So it's really gonna push Tesla to work even harder with interoperability issues that have been noted between the Tesla supercharging stations and non-Tesla EVs. We've seen it with an EV9, with the Silverado, with Kyle's beloved e-Golf, and this will be significant. I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter how old your EV is. Hopefully it will work on the ubiquitous charging network that you have access to. So Tesla definitely has some work and time and energy and money to invest in there for interoperability for all the EVs that will be coming onto their network. It'll be very interesting to see which automakers are able to work best with Tesla based on their hardware, their software, and see how that all unfolds. So the oil giants are in this world and continue to invest in electric vehicle infrastructure. So how will it all play out? We know that the convenience of charging locations is a big space to improve. I know that being right off the highway, along busy routes, having amenities nearby make a huge difference for the experience when I'm charging an EV. What would you like to see at EV charging stations as they grow to be at more gas stations? Electric also covered this as well, got in there really quick, uh, the news outlet. So I'd like to you know, point you to that written piece if you want to read more about it. It was written by Fred Lambert, friend of Out of Spec team, and I'll have that linked in the show notes. Okay, pretty exciting. Would love to know what you hear about this. If you're able to visit this site, if we've got listeners over in the UK, definitely do it. Let me know. It seems like there are going to be more of these white-labeled Tesla supercharger stations coming live very soon in early 2024. Let's see it. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Out of Spec Podcast. I will see you next time. Have a lovely rest of your day, y'all. Bye-bye.